Hey, what is up and a warm welcome back to my channel. Now today's video isn't exactly a planned one. Uh, I fairly recently just got off of Apple's California streaming event and I thought I'd make a very quick video. Just some of my thoughts, um, like I said, it's not gonna be completely polished and prepared and I guess as slick as, as usual, um, but this is really just a first look and uh, first thoughts, I guess, of the Apple streaming event. Uh, I do want to just kick this one off by saying saying that I have been on the market for a new iPhone. Um, I've currently got the 10s Max, and so I've been waiting and waiting for one that would uh, be worthy of an upgrade, I guess. Uh, and so I guess you could say I was really looking forward to this release, and uh, I watched with uh, with bated breath. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was certainly jam-packed and loads to discuss uh, about today's Apple event. Obviously, I'd really appreciate it if you did leave a comment down below. Let's chat about this event. I wanna hear your thoughts as well. And if you're new to my channel, you've just come across it, do consider sticking around, hit that subscribe button, and uh, check out some more of my stuff. So let's go straight into it, uh, into my first thoughts of this event. Uh, you know, a lot about Apple TV Plus and, you know, the, the fitness offering. I'm going to skip through those. I really want to talk about the tech, the actual hardware uh, that was discussed today. So let's move straight on to the iPad. Uh, iPad, I've been a fan of the iPad straight from the iPad 2, uh, which is the first one that I had, and I've had generations since then. I did own an iPad mini before before as well. I had the, the first iPad Pro uh, and I currently have the iPad Pro 2020 as well. So always interested in development on the iPad space. Uh, that said, the kind of bottom end or the, the, the starter model has never really appealed to me. I've always been more keen on, uh, you know, the, the flagship model, you know, the iPad Pro. Uh, and so obviously on this iPad OS, it's welcome updates, but there's so many iPads out there. There's the Air as well, and you've still got the Pro now with the M1 chip. Um, so, you know, I think it's wonderful that Apple are updating the older devices and making them a little bit more current and keeping that accessible price point. I think that's really important for them to get people into their ecosystem. Um, and so welcome releases there. Obviously, the fact that the, the storage has, uh, you know, been increased. The first model you can get uh, is 64 gigs. So that's great for anyone uh, getting a new iPad. And, and of course, the fact that you can use the Apple Pencil with it, uh, even though it's the first generation, I'm a big fan of the Apple Pencil uh, and I own the first generation on my first iPad Pro as well. So a great place to get started uh, if you are considering, you know, just joining the ecosystem. It's maybe your first tablet, uh, you know, nothing wrong with that at all. Skipping over then to the iPad mini. Uh, I love the look of this device. Uh, like I said, I have owned an iPad mini before and it probably was my favorite iPad, if, I, if I'm honest, if I think about it. Obviously, you know, the iPad Pro that I currently have now is, is really capable and, and does a heck of a a lot uh, but I have fond memories with uh, my little iPad mini that I had before and it's it still stuck around in the family believe it or not um, and so the fact that it's now got that same you know full screen type uh, you know screen with with the small bezels around the sides uh, it's got the flat panels on the the flat edging at least around the sides um, I think it's great that it's now you know been brought up to spec and uh, is a little bit more modern obviously now it's also been upgraded with a, a new chip um, obviously each of these chips just get better and better and better and you know you can go through and look at the specs um, but the performance bumps uh, I, I believe on the mini I, I, I jotted down here we're 40 percent bump in CPU performance uh, and 80 percent on, on the GPU so definitely a, a power device I love the fact that it's got USB-C now as well. Um, I don't think it's quite Thunderbolt, so you're not going to get that uh, crazy fast speed, but you know, USB-C does come with its own benefits and advantages. Uh, and so if you've been waiting for that on a smaller iPad, uh, you now have it. Uh, it also has 5G, uh, which is great. I still haven't tested our 5G myself. I'm still lagging behind. Uh, but obviously here in London, there, there certainly are networks available to uh, make use of it and take full advantage of it. Um, but yeah, I think it's great that, that 5G is now also in the, in the iPad mini as well. They've obviously also improved the cameras on this iPad mini. Uh, you can now record in 4K and uh, you know, you've got a 12 megapixel camera on the back with the large aperture, smart HDR, all of that kind of stuff. Um, I think cameras on iPads in terms of the back cameras, it's not really something I've ever used uh, and I've owned a few of them, but uh, I think it is great news that the front camera now has that 12 megapixel uh, ultra wide center stage feature, which it does seem to be quite a popular 
uh, feature. I've not yet tested it out myself, but uh, from all the videos and stuff that I've watched, it does look like a, a great feature. So wonderful that that's now on the iPad as well. Uh, and then of course, the fact that you can use the Apple Pencil on this iPad mini uh, and it, it magnetically attaches to the sides. Um, you know, I think that really does just increase the use case for this uh, tablet. And uh, I think a lot of more people will be keen to use it now. Uh, and not even to mention the, the speaker system, just upgrading that, that stereo sound as well on, uh, on the iPad mini. So lots to look forward to on the mini. I'm sure a lot of you will be uh, getting those pre-orders in fairly soon. Uh, it's available next week. Then we move on to the Apple Watch. Um, I did have an Apple Watch. I think I had a Series 3 at some stage and uh, I actually just went straight back to my old trusty, the Garmin. Uh, currently, I've got the Phoenix 6 Pro. Um, I'm, you know, just in terms of a fitness watch and uh, all that kind of stuff, I, I definitely do prefer the Garmin system. Uh, but there's no doubt that Apple have made strides on their watch. Uh, for me, the battery life is still too much of a sour point to uh, ever you know, considering really going back uh, to, to an Apple Watch, even though they claim that 18 hours for that battery. Uh, but 18 hours really just, it just doesn't compare. This watch of mine, you know, I get kind of 14 to 16 days of use of a single charge, um, which is just crazy. Obviously, it doesn't have all of the smart features that you get on the Apple Watch. Uh, you know, the screen is is less of a high resolution, all that kind of stuff. But the, the, the actual features, the fitness features are, are just incredible. Um, and for me, you know, I'm still going to be sticking around to my Garmin. That said, a bit of a design change on the Apple Watch. It does look great, uh, you know, a bit more thoughtful for those cyclists out there with an automatic uh, cycling tracking that they have now and, and fall detection, all that kind of thing. I think those will be welcome changes. Uh, also, just in the sports mode, you know, we it was they demoed, I guess, uh, some tennis features, golf features, uh, people features for those of you who surf as well. So uh, definitely a lot of improvement happening there. And uh, I guess one of the, the important bits as well here is that the, the screen uh, has been redesigned a little bit. So you can now fit a little bit more text on the screen. You know, the bezels are a bit smaller. Um, so I think a lot of people are going to be quite excited about that. Uh, and of course, loads of new colors. Uh, I was quite shocked, actually, when I saw the lineup of all of the colors that are going to be now offered with the Apple Watch. Uh, and, you know, not just straps, and they're, they're definitely going to be developing the collection of straps as well. The actual colors of the Apple Watch units themselves, you've got the stainless steel finishes, aluminum as well, and they come in tons of colors. So, uh, you know, the Apple certainly have been focusing a lot more on uh, rolling out a plethora of colors uh, with their devices, which has been a, a pretty interesting move to see. Um, that That's pretty much everything I wanted to touch on as far as the watch goes. So let's then talk about the iPhone 13. Like I said, I've been waiting to upgrade uh, from my 10s Max, which is now probably just over three years old, to be honest. I know it doesn't sound like a lot. Uh, I still I still love my phone. It's got the OLED screens. It's, it, you know, there's nothing wrong with it per se, but the technology has really jumped quite a lot in the last couple of years. So I have been waiting for that uh, new release. And if you are interested to hear more about the iPhone 13, it is one that I'm going to be getting myself personally. And potentially, if you're keen on it, uh, might do some reviews on this channel as well, uh, certainly on the, the kind of camera and, and, and video front. But let's not jump too much of the gun. Let's, let's kind of get into some of the specs. You've still got that ceramic shield, the water resistance. Uh, got the dual cameras now on the, on the base model iPhone 13, uh, which they've changed the design. So there's now that diagonal kind of configuration. Uh, I don't really have too many thoughts on this design change. I'm sure some people will be quite pleased about it. Um, but, you know, I think it looks okay. I think it looked okay before. Um, obviously loads of new colors of the, of the iPhone models. So we're talking about the base models now where you get the pink, the blue, midnight, starlight, and uh, your red edition as well. Uh, the notch is smaller. Now this can only be a good thing. Do you guys remember the days we had phones without notches? We've just become so used to them um, that we, we we just accept them now, and we we almost uh, we we almost like having that space on the top and left of the screens. Um, so anyway, I'm I'm glad that the notch is smaller. They said it's by 20%. Uh, it doesn't look like that much of a significant drop for me. Um, I potentially, from all of the rumors, was expecting a bit more of a drop in the notch, but any decrease is welcomed, of course. Um, the antenna 
I thought it was quite interesting, uh, have been made using upcycled water bottles. Uh, I think that's that's fantastic. Any kind of sustainability efforts into these devices that are landing up in uh, millions of people's hands are, are always going to be welcomed. And uh, anything you do on that front, Apple will definitely get the nod up from this side. Um, what else have you got? You've got the Super Retina XDR display, uh, brighter display. It's it's on that OLED panel. Uh, it it looks it looks fantastic, and uh, it's more power efficient as well, which is uh, always good. Uh, you know, typically when we talk about new displays, they they drain more power. They the bigger they are, the more colorful they are, uh, the more bright they get. They they drain more power and battery life. In this case, it seems like that's not the case. So so that's always welcomed. Uh, also need to mention that you've obviously got the iPhone 13 mini 2, um, which, you know, a lot of people were kind of not sure whether that was going to be dropped from the lineup because the sales weren't as good as they were expected uh, on the iPhone 12 line. I mean, that said, I've seen tons of reviews and, and people really like the mini size. So I'm glad they've kept it, even though it might not be as popular as an offering as they would you know, potentially want it to be. Uh, ultimately, it, it does have its place in the lineup, I think, for sure. On the chips for, for the iPhones, you've got the A15 Bionic. So this does differ depending on whether you're going to go for the Pro model or your base model. Um, the base model's got a six-core CPU uh, and a four-core GPU. Now, these chips are just incredible. What Apple uh, have been able to to get right by using this, uh, I think they called it five nanometer technology. Is that even the right thing to say? Um, it's just insane. And, uh, you know, they, they certainly were correct when they said that the rest of the market is still catching up, not just to last year's model, but the year before that. Um, it, it really is uh, quite insane what they've been able to to get. And uh, obviously with all of those new chips come some machine learning uh, accelerators, those have all been enhanced. Uh, I think we're yet to see the full benefit of all of this as technology is kind of catching up. We're starting to see Apple roll out these features uh, that utilize machine learning in the operating system, but we're not quite there yet. I think there, there certainly still is uh, a lot more uh, taking advantage of the power of these chips, uh, which we'll only see in, in future iOS upgrades as well. Um, in terms of the camera uh, on the iPhone 13, so the base model, there's a, there's a new wide camera, obviously bigger aperture. We've got a 1.6 uh, f-stop aperture on, on the wide camera. And uh, I thought quite interestingly was the sensor shift technology now making its way from the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Uh, sensor shift, if you don't remember what that is, that is where you effectively have image stabilization where the sensor actually moves as well. We normally call this IBIS uh, when we talk about other bigger cameras. But for me, the fact that they're rolling that out to you know the iPhone 13 and the iPhone 13 mini is mind-blowing. I, I thought that, you know, for it to roll out into the mini, I, I thought it takes up quite a bit of space. And, uh, you know, obviously to have that stabilization, you need to have that extra room for the for the sensor to move around. So I think it's great that it's, it's coming to the smaller phones. Uh, and, you know, certainly people who enjoy video and enjoy taking videos on the iPhone are going to be very, very happy with uh, with that release as well. On the video front, I think the, the the notable thing to discuss today is the cinematic mode. Um, as someone who enjoys uh, taking videos and someone who's been trying to polish up, I guess, on uh, my, my videography, the cinematic mode has got my attention. It, it definitely seems like uh, something that's going to be quite useful to uh, indie filmmakers, if you'd like. Uh, so it's, you know, the ability to, to rack focus uh, is what they what they say. So basically focus on one subject and then kind of slowly, uh, smoothly, shall I say, focus onto another subject. Um, the fact that the camera does this by itself, uh, by analyzing your expressions, it'll you know automatically recognize people. It looks to be really well designed and really well integrated. So until I've actually got the device in my hand and can test it out, um, you know, we'll have to see. But uh, certainly off of the first look that we had, it looks to be very slick. And uh, I'm pretty keen to to check it out, to be honest. And uh, the, the one thing that, that blew my mind on this completely, it was mentioned uh, more about the Pro model, but I, I, I'd imagine it is available in the Mini and the 13 as well, is actually being able to alter the focus after the fact so to be able to actually record a video 
And then afterwards, when you're watching back or editing or whatever the case is, you can actually then choose where you want the focus to be. So to me, very clearly, that's not using its full kind of wide aperture, but is is rather, you know, slimming down that, that aperture, keeping everything, you know, pinpoint sharp in focus, and then rather having the, I guess, machine learning, if you'd like, automatically kind of blur the background and give you some kind of what artificial bokeh in real time uh and uh yeah that bokeh looks it looks good so uh yeah really quite keen to see what that does and uh yeah dolby vision hdr 4k 60 hdr all of that coming to the base model iphone 13 uh which i think is fantastic battery life improvements as well on all devices uh is very welcomed. These new chips that Apple are producing are, you know, consume a whole lot less energy, which is just mind blowing. Uh, I also said the screen, uh, you know, doesn't doesn't consume as much energy. So, however they are getting these marginal gains, it's all welcomed. Any little bit of boost in battery life, I think we're all really keen to to lap up. Uh, and you know, I won't go through the exact back battery life specs for all of the models, but you can certainly go and go and find that. Um, Interestingly enough, MagSafe is here to stay on all of the devices. Um, you know, I, I don't know whether it has or hasn't been too much of a popular uh, feature. I think certainly on the being able to charge devices quick and easier and being able to mount something to, to a car or that kind of thing, I find it pretty useful. But whether I would ever go so far as to actually mount a wallet on the back of my iPhone, I don't think so personally. Uh, so you know, it, 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 it's a nice, nice to have, I guess, a nice to have the ability to add accessories onto your iPhone, but there's nothing really that I see at this point, uh, that I'm going to get when I do eventually get the iPhone 13 or which one will I get? Let's get there. Uh, let's talk about the pro. So the pro, obviously you've got that beautiful surgical grade stainless steel all the way around the, the iPhone. We've got a couple of colors this time. I was quite sad to see that vivid blue. I can't even remember what it was called in last year's model. I was quite sad to see that go. That's not there anymore. Uh, what we do have is graphite, gold, silver, and Sierra Blue. So Sierra Blue is quite interesting. Um, I have to start off by talking about the Pro and, and mention that intro film a little bit with the cameras. It was gratuitous. It was just incredible. Anyone who loves B-roll, this is your little bit to watch. <laughs> of the whole event, this is the bit you want to watch. Uh, they certainly do show off uh, their tech in the best way possible. So kind of you know, just breaking down every little component and uh, and having a look at, at how it is manufactured and, and how it rolls up into, into the end device. Um, it certainly does make you pretty excited about it. So like I said, that Sierra Blue, that's the, that's the one that they used for that B-roll clip. And it's an interesting color. Um, I probably am going to gravitate maybe towards the graphite. Uh, who knows? Maybe the Sierra Blue will, will grow on me. At least there are a few days to decide before putting in the order. Um, so, you know, I'll definitely give it some thoughts. But uh, here in the Pro as well, you've still got that smaller notch, uh, which you also have on the 13 base model. Uh, you've got that matte glass on the back, which just looks incredible with the stainless steel on the sides. Um, you've also got the ceramic shield and the water resistance, everything else you, you get with the base model. Um, but on this A15 Bionic, you instead get a five core GPU. So if the you know graphics processing unit on the base model wasn't good enough, Apple are like, no, you're a pro user. Here's an extra core. And uh, in terms of performance differences, you know whether you'll ever fully utilize all of those cores on a mobile device, I don't know. Uh, that said, you know I was in Greece the other day and editing a little bit of drone footage on my phone. And I could feel my phone, uh, you know, chugging and, and, and lagging behind. Like I said, it's a 10S Max. Um, so, yeah, all of that processing power is obviously going to be useful. Um, and, you know, especially with all of the new features that they roll out, uh, you know, that utilize machine learning, all that kind of stuff. Here, you've also got a Super Retina XDR. This is on the, uh, the Pro model and Pro Max. Uh, on this one, it's got a thousand nits of peak outdoor brightness, which is just insane so you know whenever you're outside and looking at your phone and having to kind of like squint to be able to actually see what's on your screen uh, that's not going to be an issue anymore because you've got plenty of power um, to you know to match up to the outdoor light which is fantastic and 
importantly, and I'm very happy about this release, is the Pro Motion Display. So they explained how the technology works. Obviously, the screen is not always going to be at 120 hertz, which is what the ProMotion can do. I've also got the ProMotion on my iPad uh, Pro 2020. And, uh, you know, there's just something about, I guess, you know, that physical, obviously, it's a touchscreen. So the more natural and quick you can make those movements um, from your finger to something actually happening on the screen, uh, it's always going to be welcomed. So 120 hertz on that ProMotion display. And like I said, they explained how it works. So uh, effectively, when you don't need all of that uh, high refresh rate, it it, it automatically slows slows that refresh rate down. So if you're just reading an article online or something, you'll go as low as 10 hertz um, and then ramp up to 120 when you actually need it. So it's very smart uh, to conserve energy, all that kind of stuff. You know, I think we do appreciate that. Uh, and any, you know, increases or enhancements in battery life, uh, we're never, never going to complain about. So the screen size on, here, on the, the Pro and the Pro Max are 6.1 inch, 6.7 inch, respectively. Um, I do think I'm going to go for the max, to be honest. Uh, it might be a little big, but you know you always get that that tiny little bit of a bump in in battery life and, and extra performance with with the max. Um, so for me, because I've been waiting so long, sort of three years to to upgrade, uh, I think I'm, I am going to go all in, get the max, uh, and I'll report back with my findings definitely on the cameras. Uh, here you've got the telephoto lens with a three times optical zoom. Uh, you've got an ultra wide with an f-stop of 1.8. Uh, for all of those of you who are listening and don't really know what any of these f-stops mean, it's effectively talking about the actual aperture of the of the camera. So the wider, or the, the, you know, the, the wider the aperture can be, the, the more light you can let into the sensor. Obviously, uh, you know, the more background blur you're going to get, the, the, the better looking uh, image you're going to get with, with more light feeding into the sensor. So these are always only going to be a good thing uh, when you when you hear about a, a lower aperture. We've got the wide lens. This one's got an f-stop of 1.5. Uh, and on the camera front, uh, just in terms of photos, I've, I was really quite excited about the macro photography and being able to focus on something that is two centimeters away from your lens uh, I think it's just insane. And, and those images looked so good of that flower and, and the leaf. Um, yeah, I think the, the, the Apple, uh, you know, the iPhone camera has certainly come a long way. Um, the, the other thing I liked to see is uh, I, I haven't been a fan of the HDR look uh, that comes from, you know, the iPhone 12. And, and from what they showed today, the, the contrast levels have been fixed. Um, you know, it doesn't look too artificial obviously you want to be able to recover detail in the shadows but you don't want it look looking like unrealistic uh, and so it looks like they've done a bit of work there and uh, there's even some more feature sets so i think they called it photographic styles uh, where you can embed your, your personal preferences as well and uh, in that kind of uh, apple raw or whatever you want to call it computational photography um you know, you can have your individual preferences be rendered at each of the various layers that all eventually get rolled up into what is your final image. So it all looks pretty smart uh, and obviously always better to, you know, have your preferences, make adjustments at the lowest level of data than getting a JPEG and then trying to put your edits on the JPEG and not having enough information. So uh, I, I like the photographic styles. Uh, I think it's going to be a welcome feature and I think a lot of people are going to like it um, just to be able to take your image uh, the way you want it and have it, you know, roll up all of that extra information and computational photography all at the same time. Uh, I think it's a, a great add, great feature that, that Apple have added uh, in this release. In terms of on the video front, I am delighted with one of the changes. Can you guess what that is? ProRes video. Um, so the ProRes video format for anyone who has uh, dabbled in videography before is just such a great silky smooth like buttery format that is uh, obviously big. These files are big, um, but you get so much information with them and, and you can do so much with it. The quality is so good and, and the playback is so smooth. Um, I'm currently recording this on a Fujifilm X-T4 and, uh, you know, any camera really that, that records in, in H.265, uh, you know, you typically need to actually convert that into something more manageable before you can actually edit the footage. So the fact that your iPhone is now going to be able to straight out of the gate, uh, save a file down as ProRes and you can just 
literally start editing straight away, I think is great. Uh, it's limited to 4K 30, um, you know, where I think with the, the Dolby Vision HDR recording, you kind of get 4K 60 from, from, from what I've seen. Uh, so yeah, I think, I think that is uh, a great feature to have ProRes just recorded straight out of the gate. Um, I think that's going to be fantastic. Uh, and then on the pricing front as well, uh, you know, it looks like they've kind of maintained the prices more or less the same. Uh, you, you know, you're getting more storage in the base models uh, as well. And for the iPhone 13 Pro Max, you even get a one terabyte option which is insane. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to think how you're gonna fill that up just by taking photos on your phone. But if this is a, a video device ultimately, uh, and you're shooting in ProRes in 4K 30, uh, you're gonna need that size if you're gonna to wanna to record anything um, and, you know, be able to still use your phone for other purposes as well. Cause this is not just a camera, this is your phone that you can use for everything else as well. So uh, I think that one terabyte option is is very welcomed and, and how they squeeze it into, into this phone. And I don't know quite what the price point is gonna be as yet, um, but we'll, we'll certainly wait and see. So that wraps up all of my thoughts uh, on the Apple's California streaming event. Like I said, apologies, this video hasn't been as structured uh, as I would have liked to. I just wanted to do a video off the cuff uh, with all of my thoughts um, you know, on this event and uh, all of the devices announced. Uh, let me know if this is something you enjoyed. If you'd like to see more videos from me uh, that are you know, not as structured, just off the cuff like this, uh, definitely do let me know in the comments down below. Like I said, if you want to see anything about the iPhone 13 Pro Max, which is the one I will be getting do stick around hit subscribe and uh, follow everything i release on this channel i certainly will be uh, giving you some more stuff on it uh, when i do receive it and uh, yeah keep your eyes peeled for some more very exciting stuff on my channel uh, i've got some really exciting videos coming up in the next little bit one of which might even be reviewing an electric car whoa uh yeah Electric cars, that's tech too, important tech. Uh, and, you know, that's been tied up in, in chip shortages and all that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, certainly do keep your eyes peeled for some very exciting stuff on this channel. Uh, that's all for today. Thank you so much for sticking around right to the very end. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know down in the comments what you thought. Let's have a conversation down there. And uh, I'll see you very soon.